those are bright. That's good. Head's cut off a little bit. That's fine. Flying solo tonight, everyone. I'm, I'm waiting a minute or two to get some people in here, but thanks for coming. Well, I am flying solo tonight, so bear with me. Get my beer going. So, let's see how this goes. Looks good. Everything looks good. See, we got two people here. We're going to give it a minute. I usually wait a couple minutes to uh, get started. Wish I could make my chat bigger. It's all right. Cheers, everybody. I'm drinking uh, a little Yanger tonight. All right, 7 o'clock now. You know, wait like a minute or two, get going. Let you guys know what I'm making and go from there. Luke. Luke, everybody, if you can hear. Uh, can somebody just, if you can hear me, just shoot me a comment, to let me know if everything's working okay. Because again, I, I'm by myself tonight, so if you could just let me know in the comments. Uh, hey, I can hear you. That'd be awesome. 7.01 now. So yeah, like 7.02, we'll get going. But yeah, if you guys can hear me, please let me know in the comments. Here he comes. Luke, you gotta go downstairs, buddy. Get, go on, downstairs. Go, go downstairs. Yeah. Hi there, looking forward to your straight bass next catch. Thank you. Awesome. So I'm assuming you guys can hear me. All right, we got five people here. One like. 702. All right, cool. So thanks for joining. Let's get sauced. My name's Sean. If it's your first time here. Uh, I drink, I cook. Hey, I'm Tommy. Um, yeah, so I drink, I cook, and uh, I show you guys some cool stuff. So tonight, got something very, very cool. We are going to be making... A striped bass piccata with some uh, roasted garlic and Parmesan potatoes. Um, so the spring run is in full effect. Well, it's the beginning of the spring run right now in New Jersey for striper, but I've been going out. Uh, I caught this fish on, what's today? Today's Friday. I caught this fish on Wednesday night with my buddy Henry and my dad. Um, so caught it, cleaned it, vacuum sealed it, and uh, it's it's still going to be good, nice and fresh. Um, I started using this method. I'm going to butcher the pronunciation. It's a Japanese method of fish preservation called uh, ikajimi, I think it's called. So instead of usually, you know, you catch a fish, throw it in the cooler, and it kind of kind of grotesque, it kind of dies slowly and everything like that. Um, this is a way that you preserve the fish. You you humanely kill the fish instantaneously. You bleed the fish out, uh, you immobilize the fish, and it prevents like the ammonia and things getting released in the muscles of the fish, and it preserves uh, the flavor, and it'll firm up the meat, and it'll last a lot longer. So that's what I've been doing, and then I vacuum sealed this. So um, with that being said, I'm actually going to get my potatoes started first before we start cutting this up. So I'm going to just set this aside. Uh, I cubed up some potatoes here. I have them sit in water uh, so they wouldn't brown. And I used a mandolin uh, to cube up these potatoes. And this is going to be the, uh, the side, the main side. So I'm going to get some olive oil going over here. Here we go. Get some warming up some olive oil over here. I'm going to get our potatoes going now. And hopefully everything will cook. And we'll all be done around the same time. It never works out that way, but we're going to attempt it. So get that olive oil going over there. I have some, I have half a white onion. I have some red and orange bell pepper. And I have some garlic that we're gonna use for our ricotta and our potatoes. Um, so we're gonna let this olive oil uh, come up a little bit. I'm gonna add my onion and my peppers. And then I'm, I'm, after they've, they've cooked, I'm gonna remove them so they don't burn when I cook the potatoes. Okay, so while our olive oil is coming up, add my onion. And I'm going to add my red and orange bell peppers. 
right. So let's mix this up real quick. Let these begin to saute in the olive oil. And we're not going to cook these too long. Uh, the onions are pretty thin, and, and the peppers, you know, you want them to have a little bit of bite. So we're just going to cook these till they get nice and fragrant, okay? Um, again, thank you all for joining me. If this is your first time, awesome. If it's your billionth time, that's great. Oh, with the garlic, we're not going to add the garlic in yet. We're going to add the garlic in later, okay? Uh, let me drain these potatoes. Now, I got about four potatoes here I cut up. Um, towel, dang it. Um, we got four potatoes I cut up. I don't know if I'm gonna cook all four, but we'll see. So, turn this up a little bit. Again, we're not gonna leave the peppers and onions uh, in while we fry up these potatoes, because um, we don't want them to burn. We want the potatoes to get nice and charred. We don't want these to burn. So, um, well, let's give this another minute. This is just starting to come up right now. Get our olive oil nice and flavor. It's starting to smell really good, so I know I'm about another minute or two with that. Uh, again, name of, name of the show is Get Sauce, so I usually have a drink or two while I'm cooking. Let me know what you're drinking in the, uh, the comments. I'm going to open up our fish real quick and rinse it off. Even though it's vacuum sealed and vacuum sealing helps prevent uh, bacterial growth, it's always good to dry off, or I mean, wash off your fish. So, oh, nice and fresh. Nice and fresh. Probably. I'll dry out both pieces, or I'll clean off both pieces. Now, when you preserve the fish with the method that I was telling you about, and your fresh is, baby fresh, <laughs> your fish is fresh, your fish should be nice and firm, okay? If you're not catching your own fish, if you're buying your fish, you want to make sure your fish is fresh, okay? One of the easiest ways to tell if your fish is fresh, oh man, Luke, Luke's going to knock over something. I know he is, and I can't yell at him because he'll start running, and no bueno. Don't let your onions and peppers burn. Again, we just kind of want them nice and fragrant. One more minute with these. I'm going to turn my heat down, too. When you're cooking, side note. Never be afraid to adjust your heat while you're cooking. Never think you got to keep it on one thing. Um, anyway, when you're fish, when you get fresh fish, look, it's nice and firm. All right, I'm not, my finger's not going through it. This feels like a steak. Okay, that's what you want. If you're not catching your fish, if you're buying your fish from a supermarket or a fishmonger or whatever, you want to make sure your fresh is, you're fresh. Oh my gosh, I did twice. Make sure your fish is fresh. Now, the other way to tell is the way it smells. If you can't do this without going, oh, 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 oh. it's not fresh fish, okay? So that's nice and clean and dry. Our peppers and onions are nice and fragrant, good. All right, so we're gonna remove these. Get a bowl. I'll mix a couple of work. Right here. So we're gonna set these aside. I'm sorry I didn't go live last week. I'm not having to work an overnight shift, uh, but I've got like two or three videos ready to be edited. Little short videos if you guys watch those. So they'll be up probably this weekend. I'll get them going. All right, good. So I'm gonna keep these right here. I'm gonna add a little more olive oil. This is the only olive oil. It's okay. Add my olive oil. Turn up my heat to like seven, and now I'm gonna add my potatoes.
No, I'll cook them all. Why not? I don't have too many potatoes. So for right now, all I want to season these with are salt and pepper. All right, so two amount of salt, I mean pepper. Jeez, I'm all over the place tonight, I'm sorry. Two amount of pepper. Put them out of salt, all right, and mix that up. You want all this coated, salt, pepper, on all the potatoes, all right? So make sure you mix that up. We're going to add, it's going to take us about 20 minutes to cook these this way. So nice and coated, salt, pepper, cover. That's six. Set my timer for 10 minutes. Sorry. Okay, cool. So let's prep our fish now. So, again, this is fresh. This is nice and firm. Uh, straight bass, if you've never cooked it, they have like kind of a big barrel rib cage. And even if you, you know, do it pretty well, you might find a couple bones. So what I recommend is just run your fingers up and down and see if you find a bone. Like right here, found a bone. So I'm just going to cut that piece off. Let me get rid of these paper towels here. You know, you're not going to get every bone on every fish. It's not going to happen. So I got, I've got one, I've got a little thing of rib right here. All right, so I'm going to trim this. That's fine. Uh, set aside, throw it out, doesn't matter. And I can see this, this is like the dark meat, the rib meat line right here. And I got one, my knife, my dad actually cleaned these, but he was using my knife and it was brand new, it cut right through all those bones. So I'm just going to trim this little bit of meat off right there. Okay. So. All right. Now you could use this for fish stock. You could all sorts of things. So that's pretty good. Get rid of this. Feel here. I got no bones. That's good. All right. So I'm going to. So we'll do four portions. One, two. Uh, I'm going to trim right here. That's a little. I'm going to go right down the middle here. Right down the middle here. Now, here's that rib meat again. Just give it a good feel, real quick. Good to go. Good boy, Luke. Again. No fishy smell. When you cook this, you probably won't even tell that it's like fish. I'm I'm gonna get rid of this little bit of tail. I'm I got more striper. I'm sorry. I know it's a little bit wasteful, but it's got a couple bones in it, and it's just not worth messing around with. Got my beer. Now we're gonna saute this fish. So with any meat, you want to season it. Nice. Salt and pepper. Okay. Four portions. And you can have you can salt it pretty heavily. Luke's trick. Drinking the toilet. I don't want to yell. My mom says I shouldn't yell at Luke on stream. Hey, Luke. Luke, who's outside? Go upstairs. Don't go after it. Go get mommy. Salt and pepper this fish. Good. Give that a good pat. Now you can kind of dry brine this if you want this fish to be real dry, but this fish already is real dry because of the way that we preserved it. We vacuum sealed it. It's nice and firm, nice and dry. It's going to fry up, sear rather, real well. You can be generous with your seasoning here. No problems there. Good. Good. Now, get our 
pan hot on our little hot plate here. Go, we're gonna go five. So when you cook fish, it's like super easy to tell when fish is ready, okay? You're gonna watch it. It's kind of translucent right now. You're gonna watch it cook white till about halfway. And then when it's halfway, you slip it. Super easy. So while our pan's coming up to temp, I'm gonna add some olive oil. Keep some of that for later. Then we want this pretty hot. You don't need it like scalding, but you know, just, just start to smoke a little bit. And that's when we're gonna add our fish. Okay, our potatoes are see they're steaming nicely. So the way I cook my potatoes, the same way I do my home fries for the breakfast or anything like that, is I cube them up, I steam them for 10 minutes, then I take the lid off and I fry them for 10 minutes. And they, they come out great. So that's the way I'm used to doing them. Um, sorry if you guys hear that. There we go. Hot plates are magnetic, so it'll move the pan. Um, you guys have any questions? about what I'm doing, or if you're just enjoying it, let me know in the comments. Share the link. You want your friends and family to watch. As soon as this oil gets at the temp, we'll start frying this fish. We're going to fry two pieces at a time. Um, we don't want to overcrowd the pan. With that being said, i got to find my spatula. Not if there's spatula, but it'll do. It'll do. So, that's what I say. My dad said I said something when I'm looking for thoughts to collect my... And, and he said, I don't know what it is, but I was watching it, and you always do it. It's when I say so. This is just starting to steam up. Not steam up, sorry. It's just starting to smoke just a little bit. So, let's take our fish. I just did it again. And you want to hear that sizzle. This will probably be the only time that you'll smell fish in, in the entirety of cooking this fish is right when you throw it in the pan, you'll smell. That's about it. This is a dense fish. Like I said, it's very firm. I can't, I'm pushing right, I can't push my fingers through it. And the way it firms up when you preserve it with this, this method that I was talking about earlier, it, it almost has the texture of lobster. That's how firm this striped bass can be if you cook it correctly. So we're just going to let this go now. Our potatoes got four minutes, and then we got to take a little off and fry them for another ten. And we're just going to watch up the side here. We're going to watch the white kind of. You'll start to see the golden brown on the edges. You'll see the white start coming up through the fish because we want to make sure that this fish, you know, is cooked through. You can leave the slightest bit of translucent in the middle of this fish when you pull it because it'll continue to cook. But if you like your fish with a little bit more like of that well. Texture, I would make sure you thoroughly make sure you watch the white come all the way up the middle. Um, all right, if Sean doesn't eat a piece of that raw salted fish, like if I <laughs> Ryan, if, if I just caught this today, I absolutely would, but I'm not gonna not gonna do that one. Uh, can you explain the way you preserve it again? Okay, so it's a it's a Japanese method of fish preservation called I believe it's pronounced iki, ikijima or ikijimi. So as soon as you catch the fish. You humanely dispatch it by sticking something in its brain. Usually a, a pin or I, I use a knife right in the brain stem. After, I, after the fish is dead, I, I bleed it out. Okay? Like some people bleed blue fish and they'll, you can bleed every fish. Okay? Now, you want to take it one step further, further, you would take a needle and you would go up the spine to make sure that the fish doesn't move at all. But I didn't do that. This fish wasn't moving. Um, and then right away, you know, come home. Clean the fish right away, wash it off, and then I put it in a vacuum sealed bag, and this fish is, is fresh as, you know, the day I caught it, essentially. So I'm starting to get that white about halfway up, so I'm going to check the color here. Got a nice color to it. Now... Another thing, too, that's like a common misconception with cooking. People are like, oh, only flip your protein one time. Don't, don't. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. It does look, it does look pretty good. Um, you know, say, oh, you know, flip your, only flip your protein one time. Well, 
Don't listen to that whole shit, okay? If you got to flip your protein more than once, you got to flip your protein more than once, all right? You're not less of a cook because you have to flip your protein more than once, or maybe you didn't get the sear that you wanted or anything like that. So I'm going to let this come up a little bit more. I'm definitely going to get a plate to set it on. We've got about a minute left on our potatoes. And I'm going to show you how we're going to finish them off. I think the last two lives now have been seafood. I'm going to seafood food. I've been pretty stoked catching these stripers, so. All right. Ten seconds. That's fine. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit timer again. I'm going to put it on for another ten minutes. Start. I'm going to bring my heat up a little bit. And in about five minutes, ooh, Already starting to get golden brown on the bottom of these potatoes. At about five minutes, I'm going to throw back in my peppers and onions. But right now, I'm going to throw in a knob of butter. Literally. See that? Perfect. I'm not a good basketball player. So add in some butter. Going to add some more color to these potatoes. And then we're going to start seasoning up our potatoes. Now these potatoes, they're already pretty soft because I cooked them so small, but cut them so small. I, I can't talk tonight. I'm, I'm sorry. Let's see where we're at here. Leave it on there a little bit longer. I turned my heat up to like around eight on these potatoes. And really, all we're doing now is we're starting to get color. That's what we want. We want to get these, these nice and golden brown. I might even add a little, little bit more olive oil in. Good. We kind of want to fry these up now. In about five minutes, we'll re-add our peppers and onions and our garlic and all sorts of stuff. All right, so I'm going to remove this fish. We'll start on our other pieces. Nice. Start on our other pieces here. Pan, our pan's temperature came down from our fish being in it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to let it come back up to temperature. All right. See that? So we're just talking about not having to flip your fish one time, all that sort of stuff. But your pan can come back up to temperature. If we've added some moisture and everything into the pan, so let's bring it back up to where it's going to smoke. Maybe even raise the temperature up a little bit. And then, of course, we still have to make our sauce, but we're going to make that in the pan. I'm not going to touch those potatoes for like another minute. So as your oil starts to separate in the middle of the pan, that's how you know that we're getting hot again. We're starting to smoke. So now we're going to reintroduce the fish. Also, what you watched me do where I reached in and grabbed the fish while it was already in the pan and pulled it out and put it back, don't do that. If you don't cook a lot, don't do that. That's a dumb idea. My fingers are numb from cooking and multiple sclerosis, but that's besides the point. So, let our fish get going. Finish our beer. What's everybody drinking? Nobody let me know what they're drinking tonight. Ryan, I know you're drinking. I'm half tempted to break that fish open. We're going to let it rest first. I'm going to get this cutting board out of the way. And just clean off the butcher block a little bit. Oh, I got your towel right here. See? Not wasting paper towels because I get yelled at for that.
Now I'm going to stir these again after they've been sitting there for a minute. Get some nice color in here. These pieces of fish are tab. Oh, you're drinking tab. I got you. Put your call a tab at the time. Excuse me. So these pieces of fish, they're a little thicker. These were kind of like the end cuts. These were more the uh, the the thicker part up towards the head. Um, so they might take a little bit longer to cook, but that's fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate this one piece of fish. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll back it up a little bit, but you can. See the color where it's getting white versus translucent? That's what we want here. All right, so we got five minutes left here. Peppers and onions going back in. There we go. Peppers and onions going back in. I'm also going to add in some of our garlic that we have pre. Now, this is not store-bought pre-med garlic. Don't buy that shit. Cut your own garlic, be an adult. It's a million times better when you do it this way. All right, so I'll put about a clove and a half in there. All right, stir all that in. Start getting some color here. Right, pump up a little bit. We're going to add in some oregano over here. Good. Jack Daniels. There we go, baby. A little Jack in there. I see there's some more viewers. Thanks for watching. We're making strike bass piccata with some pan roasted potatoes. Call it farm potatoes. Speaking of which, or the farm. Ooh, let me check our fish here. We're probably about ready to flip. There we go. There we go. That's what we want. That's the color we want to see. All right. Let's get some, speaking of parm, let's get some parm for our garlic parm potatoes. Fresh parm. Talked about this before. Don't buy the tree bag stuff. It's all potato starch. Good amount in there and then mix it up. See what it looks like. Good. Now the peppers, peppers serve a dual purpose. Okay. One, they have that little bit of freshness. Okay, but they're also gonna have a little bit of color. And if it's, you know, you're trying to impress somebody, you want to make sure your plate doesn't look so bland. I'm going to back our heat down here. And our fish is just about cooked, because I went a little more than halfway when I did it that time. So we'll give this another minute. Seven. Thank you guys, seven people watching me. Awesome. So glad you're here. Um, my name's Sean. This is Get Sauce. Drinking the Yingling, cooking striped bass piccata, fresh striped bass. And uh, we're just about ready to start the piccata portion. One of these potatoes fry up a little bit more. All right, I'll probably let this fish go until that's done. Um, yeah, piccata is a pretty easy sauce to make. Oil everywhere. Um, doesn't take that long. It tastes delicious with fish. I'm a big fan of the piccata with fish. Mine's not entirely traditional, but it's pretty good. I'm going to pull this fish. That fish looks... Pretty perfect the way that it is. Nice and firm. Nice. It's already flaking right there. That's great. So, removed our fish. I'm going to remove this oil. This oil is a little burnt. I'm going to turn our timer off here. All right, I'm going to take this oil out. 
I got paper towels in there, don't worry. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this on. Power level on, power level. I'm gonna leave it like medium low. Alright. I wanna get all the little black bits out of here. Just because that's kind of like burnt pepper. We don't we really don't want that in our sauce. We're not really getting fond for the uh, the sauce here. So we can just pan them off real quick. Good to go. And then throw the rest of our olive oil in. I need to put a little bit more than that in. But that's actually going to help bring our pan temperature down too. Because we don't want to like really burn our garlic or anything when we add it in here. Yeah, I know, I know. It gets mad when I remove the when I remove the thing here. Okay, so I got a healthy amount of which brand is your induction burner? This is a Fagor induction burner that I'm using. All right, so I'm going to add my garlic in here. All right, probably like three cloves of garlic there. Again, moving around, we don't want it to burn. Ooh, it's like instantly fragrant. That's good. Oh, I forgot to get something. <laughs> Emily's home. I can tell the blue bark. Hope you guys can hear that. Yeah, this is a fake ore induction. Uh, my buddy gave it to me, actually. It's worked out really well. Get this garlic nice and fragrant. Just start to see some brown in there. And I'm going to add some butter. Got two little knobs of butter here. I want to bring that temperature down a little bit. Might even lower this. There we go. Lower that down a little bit. All right, let that butter melt. Yeah, there, garlic. Hi, Emily. Hi. I know it's a maze. Don't hit any of the wires. Where'd you put loop? Really? All right, so real quick, we're going to check our potatoes. There we go. Now we got some color. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Let's take them off the heat. We got some color in there, nice and cheesy. Now they're going to continue to cook because the pan has residual heat. But just remove it from the burner because the burner has residual heat as well. Oh, I gotta get some flour. I got the. I prepped everything except this apparently. What else in? What the heck did I do with that? I had a whisk ready to go. What did I do with it? Oh, well, guess what? We're using this. All right. So we would kind of want to make a little bit of a roux here with this butter. So, add in like a tablespoon, teaspoon of flour, and then mix it. Don't want it to get clumpy, but we want this to thicken up a little bit. For our sauce here. Good, that's what we want. Let that cook up a little bit. Now, because this isn't necessarily like a gravy type sauce, Mix these potatoes, throw them on the burn. Because this isn't necessarily like a gravy sauce, we don't want our roux, we don't want our roux to get too thick. Um, thicker roux, darker roux adds a lot of flavor. Um, but for this particular sauce, we just want to thicken the sauce a little bit. I'm gonna bring my heat back up. I'm going to wipe down where I spilled. Now, I'm going to add some white wine, which isn't necessarily traditional, but I like it. Not traditional with a uh, piccata, but our garlic's nice and toasted. And you see where this is sticking it up? I don't know if you can see that already, where the wine's cooking off and it's sticking it up. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. Once this thickens up nice and good, I'm 
let it cook down a lot, you're not, you're not, just put it somewhere, you're not going to be able to. Emily's moving everything. I apologize. <laughs> so get this nice and thick. You'll start to see it kind of brown up a little bit. Luke, get out of here. Come on. So now we're here. We're going to add some chicken stock. All right. Some chicken stock. That's going to give us a little color. Thin out our sauce a little bit. Make sure it's nice and incorporated. And I'm going to turn my heat up a little bit. And now is also a good time to add our capers. So I have just some non pareil capers here in the brine. Probably add, I don't want to add all this is like three table. This is like three teaspoons. I want to add like two teaspoons. A little bit of the brine. There we go. Now we want to bring this to a simmer so it can reduce down a little bit. Also going to add some lemon juice. Now I left the seeds in here so I knew it would be lemon juice. So I'm going to fish them out real quick. There's a lot of seeds. Just trying to get them all to the back there. I'm going to add in the juice. This is about half a lemon. Let me do it this way. There we go. The juice like half a lemon. Now bring this up to a simmer. I'm also going to add some pepper. That's salt. Oh, I'll add a little salt too. Good. You get salt drink every show. Luke, get out of here. Yeah, there you go. Anytime I say Luke's name, you guys got to drink. Because he's paying the butt. Come on, buddy. Nope. Come upstairs. Okay. We're just about done. So, just starting to simmer here. We're going to reduce this a little bit, and then we're going to plate. That's what we want. We want this sauce to reduce. We don't want it to burn or stick, but we do, we definitely want it to reduce. This is very liquidy right now. That's why we add in that flour, kind of make that little roux earlier. I'm, I'm breezing through this. I prepped everything. You guys see that? I'm on my shit tonight. that down. Let's get this stuff out of the way. Now I've talked about this before, the sauce consistency. You want to be able to drag across the bottom of the pan and then not come back together real quick. So we're going to reduce this, maybe not all the way down to that consistency, but definitely thicker than what, where we are right now. I haven't decided how I want to plate this yet. I've actually been thinking about it all day long. In fact, I think about food all day. But let's get a plate. This food. Get some potatoes. how we're going to plate this. We want this to look kind of nice, right? Good amount of potatoes here. 
put that under the fish thing. Yeah, under the fish. Got our fish here. Beautifully cooked. I'm gonna put a piece there. A piece there. There we are. Look, you, can you please not stand under the camera in between wires? Thank you. Sausage coming together. Let's taste it. I don't use that spoon. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, that's good. What does it need? I think it needs a little salt. Uh, it's got salt on the back end. A little stock. Got this little bit of stock left. I'll add that in. And I'm going to put in a little bit more pepper, I think. The salt's there. Kind of on the back end, but it's there. So mix this all together. We'll let that incorporate, and then we're then we're good. We're good to go there. So just about it. Got some couple pieces of fish. I'll go drop off to my parents. Got some potatoes, the sauce, obviously. This is gonna be good. It's gonna be a good good uh, thing here. Now, potatoes are a great starch with fish. People don't think about it. Hey, what's up, buddy? Um, a lot of people don't always think to pair potatoes with fish. They should go with, like, rice. Um, I don't like, like, I like shellfish with pasta. I don't like fish with pasta, as weird as that sounds. Just personal preference. So... See what this tastes like now. We're about at the consistency we want. Still kind of liquidy, but it's I can drag across and it takes a second. Again, it's not like a gravy. It's kind of a wetter sauce. That's it. Right there. That's what you want. That's a good piccata. There's the brine in there, taste the lemon. It's balanced out with that little bit of flour just to thicken it up. The stock, pepper, taste the garlic, nice and garlicky. That's it right there, that's what we want. And now it's really starting to thicken up. Still there? No, it didn't. So, with that being said, turn this off. No, don't drown it. But make sure everything's got a nice little bit of sauce there. Every bite's going to have some of the sauce, some of the potato, some of the fish. I think that's looking pretty good there. Clean our plate. I'm trying to impress people here. I'm here, dude. <laughs> That's appetite. There we go. All right, so clean our plate. Here we have. Now you can put some parsley, some garnish, anything you want. Don't worry about it. Here we have a beautiful striped bass piccata over fried potatoes, pan seared. Holy, oh, let me bring it up here. I'm trying to keep it in the light, but I also got I want you guys to see it. I'm here, brother. Oh, that's what you said, Kyle. Here, brother. So there we go. Taste test. If you guys notice, I always kind of blind taste test things because I don't want you guys being like. I kind of want. I kind of want it to surprise me just as much as it surprises you sometimes, you know. Actually, I'm there. Got a picture real quick. Sorry. Got to do it. Do it for the media. 
you know? That's beautiful. Look at that. Uh, Luke's in the background, too. That's going to get me some extra likes. All right, let's get a fork. Let's see what this tastes like. So, our fish, again, nice and flaky, big flakes with our fish, nice and white, cooked all through. Please get out of here. Go, get, go lay down. Plates, nice and cooked all the way through. Look at the flakes. That's what we want. Fish is perfect. Perfect. So, get a piece of fish, some potato, sauce. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the best fish I've ever cooked. Hands down. It's like almost the texture of lobster. Perfectly seasoned. You got your salt, acid, fat, and heat. Perfect. I've truly outdone myself. I'm tooting my own horn. I know it's not nice but whatever that's a that like that's a perfect meal sorry I keep eating but wow and the fish look just flakes just cutting it with a fork perfect I'm glad I pulled it Marisol was going to leave it in there for another minute and then I pulled it I'm glad I pulled it when I did the black pepper, the amount of black pepper is perfect. Adds that little bit of bite. You get the notes of the cheese. You get the crispy outside of the fish with a little bit of crispy from the potatoes. But it's still really easy on your palate. There's a lot of, there's a lot of flavor and a lot of texture. And that's what you want when you cook. You want levels of flavor, levels of texture. I know you guys are just watching me eat now, but damn. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Perfect. Oh, yeah. It's just flaking right apart. It's just perfect. And it's not overcooked either. One of the worst things you can do is overcook fish. That's just really good. Really good. So... I want to thank you all again for watching. Thank you guys. Sorry I wasn't on last week, but I'm glad you guys rejoined. And uh, I'll be on next week. Let me know what you want me to cook. I also really want to get into doing restaurant reviews, so follow me on Instagram. Sorry, I'm talking about how cool. Instagram, Facebook, give me some uh, restaurants you want me to review. Great dish, perfect start. To the warm season. There we go. Yeah, it is. This is a good, this is definitely a good summer dish. Spring summer dish right here. I'm very happy with that. Again, thank y'all for coming. I'm Sean. Get sauce. Spread the love. It's a weird world right now. But we're going to get through it. So, finish my beer and then I will get on my way. Oh, man, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. I got to walk over here turning it off because I'm by myself. Luke's in the way, too.